Good evening, dear friends. What our society would look like and feel like if it would be governed by the values of kindness, compassion, gratitude, trust, and unconditional love. We would like to invite you to dream with us for a moment. Just going into our heart and sense, how would that feel to live in such a world? Would that be nourishing, healing? We are Erika from Impact Hub, Switzerland, and Daria, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Lausanne. And today we represent SDSN Switzerland. And this vision brought us together for a beautiful experience. And we would like to share with you today the story uh, of exploring a pathway towards such a society, as well as the main insights that we learned from it. This is an awareness-led social innovation lab about circular economy in Canton Vaux, Switzerland. It is about SDG 12 on responsible consumption and production and SDG 17 on meaningful partnerships. It's also about learning how to co-create spaces where root cause of the problems could be listened to and addressed. This is an emerging cross-sector partnership where one organization's weaknesses is the other one's strengths. We were SDSN Switzerland, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, Impact Hub Geneva and Impact Hub Lausanne, Collaborato Helvetica, a Swiss social enterprise, and we were supported by the Swiss Foundation Negro Engagement. Economic development has been traditionally approached through policies, finance, trade, technologies. However, such important elements as silos, mindsets, human patterns of the behavior that are central for sustainable transformations, they do require new approaches. One of them would be social app space and awareness-led practices to support that transformation. We were a hosting team of five responsible for design, facilitation, harvesting, and graphic recording. And these were the 21 people of all backgrounds, sectors, and ages who took part in the lab. There is so little clarity on how to steer this complex partnership to orchestrate the diversities of this level and to introduce the awareness dimension into the co-creation process. There is no structure and no past experience to build from. We learned to reconnect to our original commitment, and that was to make it work, even if it was blurry. And we also learned to trust, whatever trust means in all its dimensions. A majority of participants have no experience with the tools and methods we propose. Some are skeptical about mindfulness. We learned that trust is the key. And we can only gain trust by manifesting ourselves what we're talking about. So we are, as a co-hosting team, had to work on our own egos to transform ourselves to be able to hold space for the others. And it does require patience and courage to show vulnerability. Our transformative learning journey is four months long with six workshops along the way. What if people drop out? Well, and that happened. And we value each individual choice the way it is. And we are happy to continue to explore with those who are ready for it. So what did we experience? Remember at the beginning, the mindfulness sessions made some people uncomfortable. And at last, the same people reported transformational changes in mindsets, as well as a tremendous appreciation for that experience. So true. And remember our prototypes, which emerged th th through this experience. Three out of four were related to services to support people's knowledge, interaction, and exchange on circular economy and sustainability. And that has nothing to do with what we as co-hosting team originally predetermined as topics for this 
social app that was circular economy in water, in plastics and electronics. So it's so exciting to see the serendipity element unfolding in such spaces. I am now convinced more than ever that we cannot solve our problems using the same type of thinking that created them. Awareness-based practices and methods such as mindfulness, theory you, art of hosting, dragon dreaming and others are essential in order to discover true human potential and to dive into the root cause of the world's challenges. And yeah, if this was just a prototype, can you imagine the potential of such spaces to foster a new type and a new quality of partnerships? There is so much healing that needs to be done at all the levels in our societies. Individual, collective, multi-generational traumas which need to be addressed and healed in order to advance on SDGs. Would such awareness let social spaces be a part of the solutions? Marcel Proust, French um, novelist, famous French novelist, noted that real voyage of discoveries consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So imagine if we would look at the world with the eyes of love. We must continue to share this knowledge through presentations, media, publications, not only in Switzerland and Russia, but now USA, and who knows, maybe more. We would like to express our gratitude to everyone who has supported us on the way. To the people who we already mentioned here, we would like to add Felix Steli, uh, Nora Wilhelm, Professor Bruno Oberle, Michael Bergo, and Jorge Tomaya in Switzerland, who is with us today, and many other people. As well, we would like to thank all who didn't support us back then, because we learned a lot from that, how to bridge diversity, how to build bridges. Einstein famously said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I can solve the problem in less than five minutes. Do our societies master the art of asking questions? We would like to conclude our message today with the following question. How can we explore together the potential of awareness-led social spaces for healing co-creation of solutions where serendipity can emerge to show what is truly needed. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>